Hello everyone and welcome to this video. Now today I'm going to be um, reviewing an album by John Lennon. I'm going to be reviewing his album Mind Games from 1973. So yeah, this album review was requested by a user called Movie Review Zane Wilder, so thank you for requesting this. In this video, I will um, give a bit of quick background information about the album, then I will show you my vinyl copy of it here, and then go over each of the album songs in detail. Okay, so this was um, John Lennon's fourth album after the Beatles split up. It was released on the 29th of October um, in like the US and on the 16th of November in the UK, like 1973, this album was released. It was a um, departure from uh, the last album, which was quite political, quite messy album sometime in New York City, um, which was released that year previous. Um, this album consists mostly of like love songs and like ballads to Yoko, along with a couple more like upbeat numbers, um, very sort of similar sound and style to like the Imagine album what came out in like 1971, um, like to like much like greater acclaim. So this was recorded um, very quickly over a um, two-week period during the summer of 1973. The sessions were produced by John himself rather than the usual Phil Spector. It's also worth um, noting as well that John and Yoko's um, marriage was going through a little bit like off like a tricky time like once this album like um, like was at the least like they were just about to separate like for like a few years and like John would embark on like what's known as his lost weekend period. So when the album was released like it got a little bit like off a mixed reception it charted at number 13 in the UK and number nine over in America and um, many critics and like people like at the time felt felt that like Lennon's solo material was like inferior to that of like the other Beatles like in terms like of like solo material like by this point like in time like also like in 1973 we had releases from like Paul McCartney and Wings like two albums from them and um, like George Harrison put out his like really great album living in in living in the material world and that like, Ringo released like his first sort of proper solo album and um, which got like a lot of like acclaim as well this one was kind of lost in like the mix a little bit but anyway i will now just show you my vinyl copy of it here i bought this one um probably about like a year ago now maybe a little bit more than that like at like a record fair this is a american um pressing off the album it has got like the original cover like it had been reissued a couple of times this album like with a slightly different covers and that but this is the original one very similar sort of back cover with um the, the chat listings down there very very tiny text on that and the um the record sleeve looks like this pretty basic but you do have lyrics on it there and then more lyrics and band credits and stuff and the label for this is just the usual Apple Records label there but, but like you can tell that this is like a like American one because it does have the slightly green sort of like background like on it as well and um, so yeah that is the record looked at Okay, so now I'm going to go over each of the album's songs. I will score each song out of 10, and then those scores will be used to give us a overall percentage marking for the album. Okay, so it opens up with the title track, Mind Games, which was like the big hit like on like, the album. Like originally, this one started off during like, the Let It Be sessions, like as like a song called A Make Love Not War. And like this like final version, like it kind of like captures like the sentiment that like love is like the answer and that like, you know that for sure. Like that's sort of, like the chorus lyric that maybe like sort of maybe sort of like that piece of love message was like a couple of like years like out of date like by this point like in time time like this is like long after like the summer of love and like that sort of thing but it is still a really great song though and um, very lush production like on it as well although it isn't one of my favorite like lennon singles like what he put out and um, this reached number 18 and um, like in like the us charts and number and like number 26 in the uk singles charts so not great performance there from it but it's a good song there mind games We're just tired as you can 
Then we have a track called um, Tight Ass, which I'm giving a 6 out of 10. So this is a kind of basic sort of throwaway, um, sort of like 1950s sound, what like influenced like this song um, and like that. Yeah, it isn't a bad track though. But, like, I would certainly, like, expect more from, like, someone, like, who wrote, like, Imagine, like, only, like, two years previous. It's a little bit, like, a, it, like it's, like, a little bit, like, off, like, a silly song, this one here. But, yeah, not bad, though. All I had to do was call. And the third track in is called, um, let me get the pronunciation of this. Asu Salmon, I think that's how like you say it basically like, I think like it's like Japanese for I'm sorry and like this is like a nice enough ballad like it's very confessional like I'm like bear and like that and um, but it's a little bit bland though a little bit so like uninspired like musical like arrangements or something here although it does have a real great like guitar solo like at the end like from like Dave Spinoza who was like the session guitarist for this album so yeah a good track there and um, just not great though for me And then we get um, what for me I would say is the weakest track on the album, One Day at a Time, which is a very sort of cringeworthy song, I have to say. Lyrically, like it concerns sort of like living in at like, the moment and like not sort of like forward planning. It's very, very soft though and like very syrupy. It's got like these horrible sort of like cheesy backing singers on it. John that like, tries to do like a falsetto vocal on it but like it doesn't quite work and that and like yeah like this is like another like issue that what happens like some people say like certainly like after like John's death that he was like the true rocker like he had like all like the great like rock songs of that and like Paul McCartney was like the sweet sort of like balladeer but certainly for me like if anything like I would say like it was like opposite like John wrote much more sort of like sugary sweet ballads such as this and like McCartney rocked out like a bit more like on like stuff like Jet and like Junior's Farm and like Trap like that here but they were both still great though of course and um, but yeah for me this song here just a little bit too twee for my um, liking personally And then the album does pick up a bit after that with a song called Bring On um, The Lucy, um, like in brackets, Free The People. And this is a little bit more like off like a like political song, which does like actually date back to like, I think like late 71, like when John was working on the Sometime In New York City album. For me though, I would say it is a lot better than anything like all like that album. Like I was recently watching um, John Heaton's review of this album and like he said the difference between this song and like the stuff all that like, sometime in New York City is that this has a kind of like sense of humour like about it. Like it doesn't take itself like too seriously. And like I think that like, he hit the nail right on the head like with that description because um because yeah, I think it is a fun, upbeat song, but it does have a message sort of like running through like the lyrics, although it isn't sort of preachy and like shouting about it. I think it is a really nicely recorded song, got like a real like catchy melody, like especially like on like the chorus set. I think this is a pretty good track here, and um, Bring On The Lucy getting an 8 out of 10. My intentions are good, I use my intuition. So now before we flip over to side two, there is a little like three second like piece of silence basically called the um, Notopian International and the basically like it's like explained on like the inner sleeve and that but it was kind of like, uh, hang on here, where's it? It's like it was sort of like a fictitious country um, like invented by like Lennon and like Ono like after their sort of like difficulties with like US like immigration and that uh, and like and I, there's all sort of like we spiel about this new country and that on my like, inner sleeve. Basically, basically this is just a three second piece of silence. It's nothing really. But then anyway, the side two does kick off with a brilliant track. I think Intuition, which I really really love. It's a very sort of buoyant track concerning sort of like how to move on from like one's like previous life events and that. I really I really like the sound like off like the keyboard like on it as well. Just bounces along this track really well. I think and um, quite. Sure short as well it's only um just over three minutes long so oh, yeah a real real good track there and um, intuition a nine out of ten out 
that's followed up by another one of the album's stronger songs, which is Out the Blue, which is um, probably one of the best ballads, like, on like, the album, and, like, for me, one of the best ballads John has ever done. Um, I just love the way it, like, develops and, like, goes through different stages um, where that new sort of, like, instruments, like, being added and that, like, it certainly, like, keeps song, like, interesting for me. Yeah, I could just really like it, think it's got a great lyric, like, I could really, like, imagine, like, Paul McCartney, like, singing something like this, like, just because it's very melodic, like, very, very nicely, like, arranged this track, I think, like, out of the blue. Um, so, yeah, a great, great track there, a 9 out of 10. Now, um, on side two, we get the song Only People, which is a decent enough track, I think. Like, although, like, Lennon, like, himself, like, isn't, like, as fond of this track. Like, I think he said, like, in, like, a 1980 interview, said it was a little bit, like, off, like, a failure. Um, like, I think it is quite good. Like, it's quite, like, anthemic, like, in places. And, and that's supposed to be sort of, like, uniting people and, like, all that. But some of, like, the lyrics, they are, like, a little bit clunky. And, like, Lennon, like, himself, like, admits this, that, like, he quite likes to sound quite... Like, quite like to riff like off like the song but lyrically it doesn't quite work like as well for me but it is a good song though and um, like only people a 7 out of 10 Next song up is called I Know, I Know, which starts off very, very similar, like, like actually, like, to the Beatles, I've Got a Feeling, just in terms of, like, the guitar riff, like, what kicks off, like, both them songs. This one here, like, it sounds very similar, although it is played on a acoustic guitar, like, on, on like, this song here. Although, I would say with the song, like, when it does get started, it start, started, like, it kind of, like, plods on a little bit. Like, also, like, as well, like, Lennon, like, isn't fond of this track, calling it a piece of nothing, like, in, like, his 1980s. Playboy interview. I think it is pleasant, although it isn't a track that I would really play like in it and like in like isolation like off the album. An ultimate track now is called You Are Here, um, which is another slower song, another ballad, and um, this time concerning sort 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 of like a long distance like, relationship. Well, like, he and, like, Yoko's was, like, during, like, their, like, formative years, like, off, like, um, like, off, like, their, like, relationship, like, the first line, I think, is, like, from, from, like, Liverpool to Tokyo, um, what a way to go, like, that sort of thing, like, certainly about, sort of, like, overseas, like, love and, like, romance and that. I like, like, the chorus of the song, like, it helps it, like, a little bit, although, like, it does go on, like, a little bit too long for me, um, and, like, yeah, like, doesn't do much, like, you are here. <laughs> The album now closes with a, another little rocker, which is called Meat City, which I do quite enjoy, like a heavier rocker num rock rockier number to end the al album on. Like, it's a fun track, but it's kind of like, it's sort of like broken up, like, quite well, like, with, like, these sort of, like, strange, like, sound effects. You sort of got, like, these sort of backwards tapes, like, in, like, the middle of it and that, like, going, like, into the chorus of the song. Yeah, I think it is a good song, um, like, especially, like, the guitar playing, sort of, like, the dual, like, lead parts and it. It's really really great lyrically it is like throwaway material though and um, so yeah and um, i will give meat city a 8 out of 10. okay so overall out of 100 percent this album would score 73 percent which for me yeah that is a good album certainly like worth listening to although i wouldn't say it is like great like all oh, like amazing like by any means for me this album shows like a much sort of mellower like more like mature like songwriting like for like lennon and um, and like also like a like a little bit more sort of fun like on like certain tracks like as well such as like meat city like intuition and um, like tight ass and that but then also like sort of like as i said like slower more like mature like like, um, more like mature like reflective ballads and um, such as like out the blue and like you were here like those kind of songs so yeah it is um quite a mixed bag like in terms like of like sound and like style but also quality like as well like some of like these songs like are like a little bit forgettable and like i would say compared to like some of like his other albums this is certainly um weaker than like both like and um, plastic owner band and um, and like also walls and bridges like as well like what came after this and um, i would say it is maybe about about on par like with like imagine like that is an album that gets um like a ton of like praise but for me i have never been like hugely fond of 
um, fond of like the whole Imagine album. Like a sense that John was very much trying like to sort of like replicate like that album. Like we're still here, just looking out like the back cover now like of Imagine here. Very sort of similar concept like with like the cover design and that like off like the two albums and that. And like certainly like in like, terms of sound as well. Like they are very sort of similar albums, Mind Games like and Imagine. Both very sort of like slightly middle of the road sort of style. But certainly this is a lot stronger than the album that came before it at some time in New York City. And like overall, like as a whole album, like I would say fully stronger than like Double Fantasy and like Milk and Honey, just because those albums like are shared like with Yoko Ono. So yeah, not a bad album here. Like I would like to know what you think of it down below in like the comment section. And I will see you all next time for the next video. Goodbye.